And it's very difficult to put, an, uh, uh, you know, it's like, it's like the X factor, right? It's like, why is somebody good and why is someone else not? It's about that unique quality in the work. And some, I mean, I've taken people on one page of their sketchbook and other people have submitted all this work and there's nothing in there. But then there's someone else that I could look through a sketchbook and I'm like, oh my God, that one moment, I know I could work with that person. And that's what it's about. I'm trying to build a team. I'm trying to build a group of students, 18 students per year, with a diverse background, diverse understanding of what it is to be or what they want to be as a designer. And even though the program's called an MFA in fashion design, my hope is that my students graduate and go into all different industries and maybe don't even want to call themselves fashion designers. Maybe they want to call themselves body architects or... Um, you know, fabric engineers, I don't know, right? It's up to them and that's why this program is so unique is because there is room for these different people to produce different types of work. So, and also, you know, when, when you come from a fashion design background, as I did, you're taught that there's a right way of pattern cutting and a wrong way of pattern cutting. Um, well, not taught that, but, you know, there's, there's, there's systems in place. Sometimes when you've not got that formal background, that formal understanding of what it is to be a fashion designer, the right way to move a dart, the wrong way to move a dart, this is how you make a shirt, this is how you don't do it, it gets in the way of invention and innovation. So, you know, by not having that formal training in a group of students that might have that formal training, you know, I'm one person, my faculty are a team of people that work very closely together, but the students in that group will learn from each other as well. You know, they'll they'll see an architect working around the body, and they'll go, oh "My God, I could apply that to my thinking as as a pattern cutter." So the 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 conversation at graduate level is not about me telling you how to do something. You know, it's, this is not a bucket filled system where you come and I turn you into a designer. You should already be one, <laughs> and you just come to explore that more on your independently. It's not a taught program, but you know in conversation with myself and my faculty and your peers. First of all, if you don't have a fashion background, you need to ask yourself, why am I now applying for a fashion design MFA, right? So it's like, why do you want to come here? What, what, is, the, what is the shift in your thinking that makes you want to now suddenly do an MFA in fashion design if you have a background in something else? There must be something that you're already doing that makes you think that this is the right move for you. If you've just watched an episode of Project Runway or you like shopping for clothes, then this is not the right program for you. You need to know that this is an academic, a highly academic space where it's a personal investigation into what you're trying to do as a designer. So there could be a possibility that when I interview, I might suggest that you take a crash course in basic cutting or draping, but it's all very personal, one-on-one. -on -one. It's not about a right way or wrong way of doing something, but I always say to people, if you want to be a knitwear designer, don't wait for a class in knitwear. Go and buy some knitting needles, right? It's the same thing. I've been designing clothes since I was seven years old. I just knew that that's what I wanted to do with my career. That's what I wanted to do with my life. You don't have to wait for it. And in fact, the people that come on the program and are successful on the program are people that are already doing the work and they just want to come to have a, a conversation with people about the work and to continue doing the work. The people that come to the program who are expecting me to wave a magic wand and turn them into a fashion designer, that's, that's not the right way to go. What you can do to prepare for this program is do what you do, right? Don't try and do what you think I'm looking for. If you try and predict what I'm looking for, you will fail. What you have to do is go, what am I good at? What am I selling? What am I trying to do with my career? Am I a really good pattern cutter? Am I really good at textiles? Am I really good at um, draping? What is my? What am I really good at? And that's what your portfolio should be. If you're not a drawer, don't draw, right? I can I can I, I can see beyond those things. What I'm looking for is your brain on a page. I'm looking for that unique approach that I've never seen before. I'm looking for someone that is really gonna challenge me as well. You know, it's like I'm an old man now, I'm forty three years old this year. I know my fashion and I know where I come from and I know what I like and I know what I dislike. I'm still growing, I'm still learning. 
But the thing that excites me the most about education and being an educator is that when somebody comes to me and shows me things I've never seen before, introduces me to books I've never read, introduces me to music I've never heard, shows me documentaries, all sorts of things. Because, you know, you're, you're doing things that I'm not doing. And, and that's where the modernity comes in. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you about my favorite design work, my favorite books, and it becomes it becomes the Kyle show, and that's not what this is about, right? It's about me working with you to develop an individual independent vision as opposed to me making you another version of me because we don't need any more of me either. One's enough. <laughs> that's what my mum said. <laughs>